Welcome back. Uh, so, in the previous uh, uh, lecture, we were talking about the internal and external processes and some information about the cyclone. Now, uh, uh, coming to the atmospheric uh, disturbance and related hazard, uh, this is uh, uh, an important uh, portion where uh, uh, we have been experiencing uh, the cyclones every uh, year and during the month of uh, like during this monsoon season, we, we experience the most. So, last uh, a couple of years back, uh, there was a severe uh, cyclone, Verda, uh, which uh, uh, originated again in, in the, uh, the, uh, the eastern part of uh, uh, the Indian Ocean and then moved towards the uh, Indian mainland and the landfall was in, uh, along the uh, southern uh, eastern coast of South India. Similarly, uh, uh, we had very recently another cyclone, Gaza, and this picture which you see uh, is the, uh, the cloud cover and the eye which has been developed here at the center is uh, of uh, cyclone Gaza, which was again uh, a devastating event, uh, uh, but uh, Verda was more uh, intense as compared to this. So, uh, usually the tropical cyclone uh, are very uh, 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 intense and it is because of the intense low pressure areas in the atmosphere over tropical and subtropical waters. Now, one of, one of the most important point which you should remember is the direction of circulation that how the, uh, the circulation will take place uh, uh, when the cyclones are been formed or developed is one is the, the circulation is anti clockwise that is what you can remember is anti clockwise in the northern hemisphere. So, if you divide the globe in southern and northern hemisphere then the anti clockwise you will observe the circulation in the northern hemisphere and the clockwise in the southern hemisphere and this is due to the Coriolis effect. So, this is one of the important point which you should remember. Now, uh, uh, in India, the, uh, the Indian Meteorological Department is one of the agencies uh, which usually uh, issue the warning uh, for to different states which are going to be affected at the area which are going to be affected uh, at during the, the cyclone and mainly at the time of the landfall. Nevertheless, they also inform keep informing that what will be the speed uh, of winds and which are the areas are going to be affected over the time. Uh, from the time when the there is an uh, uh, the, the, the low pressure start developing and they have uh, uh, different uh, uh, categories which have been shown that is in terms of the classes and if you if you look at the uh, the type of disturbance what they will uh, they will give as an uh, information is the low pressure and then what will be the wind speed uh, kilometer per hour and uh, in knots also. And then what is what will be the type of disturbance that will be depression, deep depression, cyclonic storm, severe cyclonic storm or super cyclonic storm. So, this is helpful in gauging that what will be uh, the amount of damage or uh, the risk we are going to have from a particular cyclone. So, mostly what happens is that we have learned until now that most of the cyclones will develop in this portion here and then they will move on uh, toward, towards towards west okay so development of the cyclone over here and then slowly it will move over that so if you see the previous data you will find this different tracks which will be shown and then and then that will be also marked by the landfall uh, it is not only in this area but also over here you will find the development of the cyclones which are moving towards Gujarat or towards Maharashtra and all that and in the Karnataka and Kerala side. So, this Gaza again had uh, originated here in the eastern uh, southeastern portion of the Indian uh, subcontinent and moved towards the east coast of the, uh, the Indian mainland. 
So, cyclone Gaza developed over uh, southeast uh, Bay of Bengal or you can say the part of the Indian Ocean in the afternoon of 13 November 2018 moved westward or towards east coast of India heavy to very heavy rainfall and the wind speed was very high uh, which affected the, uh, the areas like Chennai, Kanchipuram and Thiru Valur when it makes the landfall on 16th. So, it started on 13th and the landfall was on 16th. So, its journey between 13th to 16th was also uh, been, uh, been given as a warning <coughs> and, and it was been updated on uh, day to day basis. So, wind, wind speed was around 130 kilometers per hour okay, and it killed around 46 people in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. So, this was the conditions where when it made the landfall, the many trees were been uprooted, and electricity lines were been disturbed and of course, it also resulted into flooding. Okay. So, this uh, uh, the cyclonic effects are twofold usually, we have a very high uh, wind speed and uh, which will uh, affect the other utilities, but at the same time you have the issues with the, with the, the heavy rainfall in the region. This is another picture of uh, from taken from the by based on the satellite data which shows uh, uh, the the eye or the development of the, uh, the Gaza. It not only affected the, the areas along the, uh, the east coast of the mainland, but also some part of the of the other countries adjoining uh, Indian Ocean in the in the in the eastern side. So, as I was talking about in one of the slide that uh, you will find some very typical track along which uh, the cyclone has moved okay. and the, the notations which are been given here like T D, C S, S C S are been given here as in D depression, D D is deep depression, then cyclonic storm and then severe cyclonic storm. Okay. So, at places you will find that uh, while it is traveling uh, from its origin, the, uh, the cyclone will get strengthened more and more and then in between you will have somewhere before the landfall at the or at the time of the landfall you will find that the, the cyclone has become very severe. Okay. So, that part uh, uh, is very much important. So, this data shows that how uh, the, the, the cyclone developed and was strengthened up and in which portion uh, during its journey it became very severe. Okay. So, severe cyclonic storm uh, which has been shown here. So, this, this is a warning which was or the bulletin which was been issued by Indian Meteorological Department or Science System Sciences Organization Ministry of Earth Sciences uh, which talks about the location uh, and that is uh, your time and date. Uh, and the location, uh, there is a lat long coordinates are been given and at that particular coordinate and time, what will be the uh, wind speed which is expected uh, in that region and what is the category of cyclonic disturbance. Either it will be cyclonic storm or a severe cyclonic storm, it will be uh, this warnings or the bulletins are regularly issued. So, this was of, of 13th. Uh, November. At the same time along with that the other information which are been given and this table shows uh, the information of heavy rainfall warnings which were been issued from 14th to 16th and 15th which has been shown by red uh, box. Okay. It says in Tamil Nadu rainfall at most, most places with heavy to very heavy at a few places and extremely heavy fall which will be greater than 20 centimeter at isolated places very likely over north Tamil Nadu and adjoining districts uh, of south coastal Tamil Nadu and rainfall at most places with heavy to very heavy fall at isolated places very likely over remaining parts of the south. So, this type of informations 
which are been given are very useful to local people not only on the land on, on staying on the land but also for the fishermen who tends to move for their day to day activities now this uh, part of information is extremely important for the strait uh, officers to plan the evacuation because uh, a lot of people who are staying uh, along the coast are mostly the fishermen and so they need to be evacuated and of course we we if we understand that what will be how far it is going to enter that is the landfall and how much area inland from the coast will be affected depending on that one can go for the evacuation then there is again a uh, piece of information which has been given that what will be the wind conditions and uh, sea condition as well as uh, uh, the storm surge along the coastal areas uh, this information is also provided so this is in, uh, just uh, uh, that how it has been developed over the time so it started here somewhere in the southern part of the andaman and nicobar islands and it moved further affecting some part over here in myanmar and then moved and had a downfall over here and it, uh, the, the one important part is that it crossed the whole the southern tip of the mainland india and went towards the other side uh, of the coast okay now another important uh, topic uh, what we are going to discuss here is in brief of course we will discuss in detail later on is related to earthquake now this is an example of a uh, an kaikura earthquake which occurred in 2016 the magnitude was 7.8 okay so the information which is shown here is extremely important uh, in terms of the hazard assessment one is the magnitude second is what depth on the earthquake has occurred and then the rupture length so the depth was quite close to the surface only 22 kilometers of course 22 kilometers for us is a quite large distance but in terms of the depth 22 kilometers for an earthquake and the energy to reach to the surface is quite less and if a shallow earthquake like this is experienced in india in himalaya is going to result into uh, like severe damage to the indo-gangetic plain so it was uh, like 22 kilometers depth 70 kilometer of rupture out of which 36 kilometer was on land that is what they show here somewhere and then about 34 kilometer was under the sea because the fault line or the feature along which this earthquake took place extended on land as well as in ocean okay, submarine and similar event was experienced recently in palu that is indonesia which also resulted into like strong ground shaking as well as tsunami so the epicenter was uh, uh, near kaikura and this was because of uh, this tectonic setting i'm not getting into the detail right now of this that is subduction zone but we will talk when we are discussing about the plate tectonics part okay, you will understand more in detail but this feature on the earth globe clearly shows that there is some unusual things which are happening here where one plate from this side is subducting below the another one here and the strain which was developed because of this subduction where one plate is pushing itself down below the another one the strain which developed was released that is sudden release of the strain resulted into earthquake and strong ground shaking was experienced 
thing. So, this is Pacific plate and this is Australian one. Okay. So, the Pacific plate is subducting below the Australian plate so, or you can say the Australian plate is riding over the Pacific plate. So, this are the plates which are subducting or overriding between this two plate usually they do not pass through very smoothly. They have a lot of friction which is which develops between both of them which result into the development of strain and sudden release of the energy stored along this plate boundaries results into earthquake. So, if you look at the background here as I explained that we have like Pacific plate which is subducting below the Australian plate here. This is what is the whole mass is the Australian plate and this one is the Pacific plate and the rupture which was experienced or the energy which was released along the fault line is you are having one of the active fault line is the alpine fault line. So, the damage which was experienced was extensive you can see not only the, the structures or the civil structures or houses or the buildings collapsed, but along with that there was huge deformation which was experienced or was seen on the surface ok. That is what we call crown deformation. So, this is one of the example which has been shown here the land has moved apart and also one portion of this one portion one side of the land has moved down. So, this was the pattern of damage and another feature which you see in this photograph particularly what we call the land subsidence resulted because of liquefaction. So, this all like things we will discuss in detail particularly about the, the land subsidence liquefaction and the rupture areas and all that. So, this was a deformation pattern which was been experienced or recorded at the time of the earthquake where you can see uh, the rail track has been zigzagged okay, or deformed because of surface rupture. The surface rupture runs here, the another part of that runs here. So, if you need to make out the sense of movement then what you can see is this part has moved like that and this one is like that ok. And this again that was not enough ok. Like this is another example which shows how the earthquakes can modify the complete landscape at the earth surface. This wall which you see here never existed before. This came up at the time of earthquake. So, this is what we call surface rupture. We are standing here in Papatea Fault, a few kilometers south of the uh, Clarence River Bridge on the Kaikoura coast. Looking here at the actually the fault plane, the plane of movement along the fault itself where uh, this side here moved up by about a meter and a half and uh, we can see the back gravels here and the gravels on that side. But what's really interesting is that we can see lines of movement here on this fault plane where which are moving down a little bit in this fashion. And that means we can see it looks impressive that we're standing here a metre and a half high, but in fact most of the movement has been along a plane something like this. <coughs> so this side here has moved forwards by, by many, many metres. These fault scarps form very, very quickly. And we know from earthquake physics that probably this fault scarp ruptured across here at a speed of about three kilometers a second. So this has uplifted a very large area of new reef here and the locals here describe not the earthquake noise but the noise of water running off the top of this uplifted platform here. They said that the noise was just horrendous and on, this side, on the downthrown side of the fault it's actually still even come up by about one and a half meters. On the other side, there's as much as six meters of uplift.
where which is losing gas. So, uh, uh, this was a very important video uh, where uh, Kelvin is trying to explain that how the movement took place. One can easily uh, look at that what was the, the height variation or the difference between this two um, this place almost like 2 meters or so. Uh, so, this is what we call as the uh, surface rupture and what he was trying to explain here was that there were some indication or the striations which developed on the fault plane which was exp exposed and it shows a particular direction. Okay. So, some striations were been observed like that. So, this also talks about or tells us about that what was the, the direction of movement. So, this portion it moved up like that. Now, this type of uh, false curves or the uh, land level changes occurs mostly at the time of big earthquakes about 7.5 and so, which will definitely result into the landscape change and that what was been explained here, where he was talking about that new reef reefs were developed ok. Like this is one, one uh, example of that what he was showing. 3 kilometers a second. So, this is uplifted a very large area of new reef here. So, he, he is talking about that this whole area got uplifted and this will form a new reef, coral reef in this region. Now, we have another uh, uh, similar uh, video, but that is uh, on land, which we have uh, will try to show you. We're standing here. So, this uh, uh, the deformation which moved or, or we can see on the surface and that was close to the coast, this is on land. Okay. So, you can see this rupture and there was an uh, uh, UAV which was been flown over this and they recorded a very good deformational feature which we would like to show you. I am sorry there is no sound for this video, but you can easily make out and look at the deformation which was recorded by the 2016 Kaikura earthquake and the rough rupture length was recorded up to 30 kilometers. Usually, mapping of such features are extremely important because this type of features, what we call the false caps, or the signatures of past earthquake preserved on Earth surface, will be important for future seismic hazard assessment, or we can say earthquake hazard assessment. But that will that is going to tell us uh, the complete history or we will be able to do the reconstruction of uh, the past earthquakes in such areas. So, in particularly if I talk about the Himalayan region, we are trying to map similar features where the earthquakes which occurred in the past have left their signatures and we are trying our best to evaluate 
and trying to reconstruct the history of the past earthquakes from such features. So, geological hazards mainly uh, we have seen some example of earthquakes and then we have tsunamis. Okay. So, if you look at this very devastating earthquake was been experienced in Japan and this was in 1995. I will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you so much.